we need to talk about the current state of rise of kingdoms and this is going to be a little bit of a different style of video a lot of times i make guide content update content new commander releases and theory crafting and all this other stuff but today i just kind of want to ramble a little bit and one of the reasons for this is because as somebody who's been making youtube content for rise of kingdoms for a long time one thing that i like to do is if i'm really struggling to come up with sort of some inspiration for my next video one thing that i'll do is i will go around youtube and i'll look at other content creators videos that they're making and maybe videos that they made three six nine months ago a year ago sometimes i even go back to my own channel and look through different videos that i have made in the past and really i'm trying to like get inspired for something new and exciting to talk about or at least talk about something that i haven't really discussed maybe recently or something that maybe has changed recently or something along those lines and you know i gotta say uh, coming up with video ideas so often is really not that easy right i mean especially when you consider that you know i've been posting two or three times sometimes even more times per week for years now uh sometimes it does get to be like really draining to think of new things to to post and so I was doing that over the past couple of days, trying to think of like, what's something new that I can talk about. And of course, you know, there's a really big KVK going on right now. And so uh, a lot of people are talking about that live streaming that and all that sort of stuff. And I've never really been the type to cover other people's KVKs. I don't know. It just, I don't know. There's something like I'm not in it, so I'm not that invested in it, but a lot of the other content that's coming out is a lot of the content that I've already kind of talked about recently, right? Like the best armies for infantry players and archer players and cavalry players and the best free to play armies and the best uh, commanders and rise of kingdoms and all this other stuff right and so i'm jumping around to different channels and i'm seeing a lot of the same sort of content and you know again th th that's content that i make too so it's really you know i'm this is partially uh an observation a little bit of a self-reflection as well and unfortunately i didn't really come up with anything like new like a lot of times when when you when you're looking for a video topic and this i'm just speaking from experience but i i come up with something and i'm like oh like yes that's what i'm talking about like i get excited about it because i'm like oh this is I haven't talked about this in a while. There's this new thing I can talk about and this and that, but I haven't, I didn't, I didn't have that today. And, uh, I started to, I started to think about that. Right. I'm trying to think of like, okay, well, what do I do about that? That's a weird, that's a weird problem to have, right? Like I love making rise of kingdoms content and I've been playing rise of kingdoms. I mean, let's take a look here at my uh, VIP 1,935 login days. I've been playing the game for a long time and, and, you know, obviously nothing has changed there, but I'm starting to think like maybe rise of kingdoms feels solved it's sort of kind of it's starting to feel to me like the game or the meta is kind of solved and the reason that i started to think about this is because you know if we look back at some of the recent commander releases we obviously just had the smite ranged commanders come into the game um prior to that we had obviously uh herman prime and ashurbanipal come into the game when we saw herman and ashurbanipal come into the game we kind of already knew that you know ashurbanipal gonna be rally meta for the most part right or at least a counter to gorgo we saw herman prime and he's like oh yeah you see the half circle aoe and he's got poison stacks he doesn't remove them and it's like yeah he's probably gonna be open field meta and you know we kind of knew that ranged uh, you know smite range isn't really gonna be a thing you know it'll have its niche uses and you know people people will have some good reports and you know it'll be what it is but it's gonna be a niche thing still and then of course we saw gorgo and liuche when those guys came out and before they even landed at the game we're like oh 2250 five target hey, aoe like obviously that's gonna be meta right and this was a little bit different because it was smite damage but regardless like we kind of knew right we kind of knew like this is sort of a no-brainer we know this is going to be meta same sort of thing with Huo. I think people maybe debated Huo a little bit more than the others, but even still, like 2700 with a decreased rage cost to a single target is kind of crazy, right? And so I feel like for the past few like big releases, I feel like we've kind of known if it was going to be meta or not before it even came into the game. And I think one of the reasons that this is the case is because if we look at some of the things that these commanders are doing, like a lot of the changes or a lot of the the differences between the new commanders and the old commanders it's not really when it comes to stats right like a lot of the stats like sure there's a little bit of inflation with the stats there if you look at something like i don't know richard for example versus liu che or versus somebody like cpo for example or you know there's a lot of stats on huo like yeah sure that they have a little bit more stats than some of the older legendaries and also we don't really see like a ton of new mechanics right like i mean there's there's some you know specific like the autumn wind effect and that sort of stuff but for the most part we can tell that something is going to be met based on the damage factor or based on a really powerful buff or debuff that's kind of the only thing that's been moving the needle recently and so you kind of get to the point where it's like 
bigger number equals better commander and it's like oh that's like really like how do you make a guide about that right like there's not that much i mean I'm not, I'm not trying to dumb this down like too much you know obviously there's a couple of unique pairings that you can come up with and i think liu che with alex was something that you know kind of surprised some people alex is seeing a bit more use now than he was before and you know they tried to bring back to myris with with herman and there's you know there's some things that you can do that you know maybe are a little bit outside the box but for the most part it's like yeah bigger number better commander kind of like open and shut case right and this got me to thinking like why is that the case because if you look at a lot of other games especially in strategy games or if you look at something like an mmorpg for example a lot of them have what is the holy trinity you have a damage dealing player dps you also have a healer or maybe support or something like that and then you have sort of your tank right and this kind of is the same with games like league of legends too you have like the glass cannons and then you have like the super tanky like just damage soakers and when you look at rise of kingdoms we don't really have that and i think they tried to do that when the game first came out we have things like richard and we have things like charles martel where these commanders clearly and even still to this day in kbk1 they are tanks right i mean by definition they can absorb a ton of damage and don't really put that much damage out back but you know in kbk1 i guess you know comparatively i guess they kind of do deal a lot of damage in that kbk but regardless the point of these commanders is to be tanky right and i think they accomplish that really well but then as the sort of power creep came through the game or as you know new, new commanders came out and new kvks came out and things like that i think we kind of i mean we haven't seen uh, a new tank right and you know do players really want that i don't know um i don't even know if we know if they know right like we haven't really tried it since richard and martel like why don't we try that and i think like also you know recently we had the new formation come into the game with you know the this testudo and circle formation and by the way I was not this is not what I thought circle would be like these feel very similar to me I, I don't know but you know clearly the testudo formation is kind of a it's supposed to be more of a tanky formation and so when I look at that and I think like okay well like clearly this is I guess for garrisons but like why don't we have any tanks in the open field and likewise why don't we have any sort of healers or support and I guess we, we do kind of have support right but it's so we're, we're so power crept down the DPS path that it feels like it would be a waste to often bring some of these supportive units, right? And, you know, some people can, and that's fine. I'm not saying they never get used, but I'm saying like in the average five March or average seven March lineup, how many supports do you see? Maybe one, maybe one, right? And this guy came out years ago. And so, you know, it has me think about something like Zenobia, for example, where Zenobia has a, her own healing factor and she can heal players nearby and same thing with uh, I think Cleopatra actually has the same sort of thing here on her active skill yeah five friendly nearby units have a 400 healing factor so it's not like they haven't tried to do this before but why aren't there more commanders that are playing that support and healing role I just feel like having more variety like that would add more of a strategic or more strategy to the game to the open field fighting in general rather than being massive aoe damage 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 massive aoe you see what i'm saying and so unless we're going to be pushing the meta in those sorts of directions it kind of feels like the game is a little bit solved right and even beyond that like we could have more um, mechanics that we've never seen before think about like games have life steal right or a vampire sort of mechanic where the more damage you deal you heal a portion of that damage for yourself why don't we have something like that in rise of kingdoms right like there's there's so many other mechanics that could literally just be stolen from other games like it, you don't have to come up with something completely new or even you know expanding more on the mechanics that already exist within the game like if we look at something like uh, Takeda for example he has the burn effect on his active skill and we've never seen that again right and why don't why don't we have that why don't we have more burn burn commanders why don't we have more uh, poison commanders obviously we're, we just got Herman but you know you, I think you kind of get the point here um, why don't we have more cleansing commanders like we see from Theodora for example or from Kusunoki right like there's a lot of these mechanics that they put in once and then and then we're done without a variety of things that you can do then you're kind of just forced to just go down that dps route and that's fine and it's it's still fun to smash people in the open field like obviously i still have a lot of fun doing that but it certainly makes you know it certainly takes away some of the um creativity that you could possibly have in a game like this which i think is is you know they're i think they're leaving something on the table there for a game that could maybe have more strategic depth 
And I think one of the things that, um, you know, well, first of all, let's talk about ranged here because I think they tried to kind of do this with the ranged commanders ranged was new when it came out last year. Now they're implementing new ranged commanders and you know, it, it kind of, again, I, I always get a little bit of pushback on this when I, when I say this, but, um, it's not really going to be meta. Right. And, and you can, you can send me a report that's a hundred to one trade. And that's great, but it's like the popularity of ranged is never like when you think of what is meta meta is the is like the way that players are playing the game it is the most effective way to play the game and when you're looking at commanders that literally can't burn a flag which is the only way you progress across the map it's like okay well i mean like why would i invest in that right like it's kind of a niche thing and that's fine we can have a niche thing but it kind of just goes against like the fundamental core gameplay of rise of kingdom so they have their role and players will use it and if you have fun with that that's great but it's not very interesting for first of all like you know that's you like really into micromanaging multiple marches you're kind of just sitting there with a range tower which is fine some people like to do that i don't but it is what it is so in this way like they kind of tried to do this they kind of tried to like do something new but there's just so many limitations to it and it's so antithetical to what we're used to that it's like it kind of just didn't really work out that well but with that being said you know going back to the absence of tanks and going back to the absence of healers i think one of the biggest sort of criticisms of that would be how could it be balanced how could it be good how could it be fun because a lot of people remember being in kvk1 and not being able to take down that richard right you're constantly hitting it and you're constantly dying and so would it even be fun to have more um tanks in the game right and, and that's that's definitely a good question um and, and also you know if we start to get really exotic with new mechanics and new things that come out you know how would it be balanced that's another question that a lot of players have and those are those are all va valid questions right but i'm kind of at a point where you know i'm thinking would it be so bad to break the meta right like at this point i feel like we've had a very safe progression of the meta and that's good um, because it makes things predictable and players are happy with their investments for longer and they can make educated investments and all that stuff and that's all good and i'm not no i'm not saying we should throw that out but i think every once in a while every once in a while i feel like the meta should be bent or broken remember when and a lot of you probably don't but remember when attila takeda came out it totally broke the game i mean it totally broke the game but it was also kind of cool because when you saw an Attila as a rally coming out of city, you knew that that was an absolutely devastating thing that was about to occur. I don't feel the same way when I see rallies these days. I mean, the, the, the original Attila Takeda rallies, when you saw them coming was like an absolute menace. It was like an absolute unit. Okay. And, and I've never felt that way about a rally since then. It, there just hasn't really been one. The only exception is I forgot the, the specific type of KVK in the KVKs where you can change the troop types, having a Tark with Zhuge Liang, that's a, that's a menace for sure. Uh, and that's really cool. But for the most part, right. I think you guys kind of see what I'm saying. We haven't had anything that just like cracks the meta in half or like really like shifts things in a meaningful way in a really long time. And, and again, uh, you know, I'm not saying that we should completely break everything. I'm not saying that, that there's no value in, uh, you know, in a very consistent meta. I think that it is good to be safe for the most part, but at some point, when does it become a little bit too predictable? When does it become a little bit too boring? And, and one of the things that I'm really curious about, because the other day I posted a video that kind of predicts what the next cavalry commanders are going to be. Right. Uh, and I could be completely wrong about that, but if that video ends up being pretty close, then I think that will prove my point, right? I mean, months out kind of knowing what's coming without knowing is like, I don't know. That's, is that, is that not boring after a while? Right. You kind of just know, I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of just wishing for a little bit more variety. That way we could have some different strategies, right? Players that maybe build more tanky or maybe build more DPS or support. I think that would be really cool. And, you know, again, I think you can look at supports that already exist in the game and say, well, Omni, they're already there. You're just not using them. And it's like, yeah, but they're not meta. And so you kind of, you know, you have to make things at least competitive with the meta for players to at least consider them, right? Like, for example, this game, lots of people can spend a lot of money on this game, right? That's, you know, we all know that I've done that. Of course, I'm very, very transparent about that. And so when that is the case, you can't expect players to kind of just experiment to their own detriment, right? There has to be a choice that is at least close to viable for them to make that jump, right? So you can't really say like, well, there is support in the game. It's like, yeah, but 
it's not really right like it's not really and and same thing with the uh with the tanks right so i mean i guess that's in the absence of those types of play styles in the meta i'm just curious as to like what's next right like are they going to break things i think that that was one of the things with smite damage where smite came out and i'm like oh cool like finally we have a new thing like it's not skill damage like this is sick um and you know i mean it's still new right and there's not that many smite damage commanders but you know it kind of I mean, it kind of ended up just being like a little bit of skill damage you know what i mean like this is it's yet yeah, it scales off of something else but it still functions the same and so i don't know how long i guess is what i'm saying is how long are we going to be going down this path of relatively predictable updates with the same sort of like high skill damage aoe or high aoe uh, high damage aoe in general is the meta because it's been the meta since what 2019 at the very latest if not before then right i'm being generous so yeah i mean like four or five years of the same meta um different faces different commanders but sort of the same strategy right and i don't know i'm i'm, I'm kind of uh i'm kind of missing some of the quirkiness of some of the older commanders even harold like he converts from single target to circular aoe and he has like this berserker just like constant popping the active skill like that's cool right it's cool but i don't know um I, i'm kind of just rambling at this point uh and i kind of hopefully i prepared you guys for that when i started the video but i would love to hear from you guys what you think about the current state of the meta in rise of kingdoms are you feeling the same way as me maybe you know maybe this is an exclusive problem that i have because i've been playing since the beginning of the game maybe a lot of new players don't have this fatigue they don't have that sort of they're not maybe as jaded i guess because they haven't been playing as long i don't know i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel it's not it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and of course subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace